real pain on Main Street and yet Wall Street in a celebratory mode. And Jay Powell able to hide behind data, the likes of which we've never seen, cushioned by severance pay, which will not show up in non-farm payrolls and will not show up in initial jobless claims, creating the facade of strength that really isn't there while the inevitably delayed filing and increase in joblessness is held at bay. And that's really where we are. It's one of the reasons that there is such disgruntlement on Main Street today and such euphoria on Wall Street. The U.S. stock market may be at an all-time high, but the Wall Street Main Street disconnect remains wider than ever, which spells trouble ahead. Danielle DiMartino Booth, a renowned figure in economic analysis and former advisor at the Dallas Fed, will guide us through a detailed examination of Federal Reserve Chair Powell's evolving strategies in response to economic changes from 2018 to 2022. This analysis will explore the impacts of these policies on both Wall Street and Main Street. America's employers continued their robust hiring streak in February, adding a surprising 275,000 jobs despite facing high interest rates. This uptick in job growth from January's revised gain of 229,000 jobs demonstrates the resilience of the U.S. economy. Although the unemployment rate rose slightly to 3.9% in February, the highest in two years, it remains low by historical standards. This marks the 25th consecutive month with joblessness below 4%, the longest since the 1960s. However, Danielle highlights a significant disparity between positive indicators like non-farm solid payroll figures and reality. While technically still employed, many laid-off workers are effectively without work, signaling a disconnect in official statistics. Additionally, a recent report reveals that Wall Street is closely monitoring an $8.8 .8 trillion cash reserve, which could fuel a significant market rally. Investors eagerly anticipate movements in the vast sums accumulated in money markets, as the Wall Street Journal reported. Despite this financial optimism, Danielle notes a divergence in the economy, with Main Street experiencing increasing distress due to rising delinquencies in areas like auto loans, credit cards, and foreclosures. At the same time, Wall Street remains detached mainly from these struggles. Now let's delve into the video to gain further insights. Before we begin, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon to stay updated with the latest content what's going on in the real economy. So people are losing their jobs at the fastest pace since 2010. January, February 2024, 182,000 layoffs were announced. The biggest bankruptcy wave that we've seen we're in the middle of since 2010. But individual companies are going out of business one at a time. Jay Powell has been able, unlike 2018, 2019, Jay Powell's been able to take down zombie players in the economy one at a time. Been a very controlled demolition. And because of the white collar nature of the layoffs, millions of workers are collecting severance pay. They're not applying for initial jobless claims. Right. So you don't see the pop in the official data. If you call Amazon or Google and you say, is this person still on the payroll? They say, yes, they are. Okay, so we have a great showing in non-farm payroll. You call the individual at their home. Are you still employed? They say, no. What do mm. they show up as? Somebody falling out of the workforce. So you have more than 700,000 people fall out of the workforce in, in, in December and January, which keeps the unemployment rate depressed at 3.7%. The more people who fall out, the lower the denominator, you're not going to see it reflected right. in the unemployment rate. So we have right now two parallel economies, one in which we're seeing automobile delinquencies, credit card delinquencies, even foreclosures of homes begin to pick up and real pain on Main Street and yet Wall Street in a celebratory mode. So we're definitely on borrowed time and the clock is ticking very loud in the background. One of the largest sources of severance pay, Google, announced uh, when it announced its first quarter earnings. They said, hey, we took a $2.1 billion charge for all of 2023. But guess what? For the first quarter of 2024, we anticipate taking a $700 million severance expense, meaning $2.8 billion for the full year 2024. 
So we know that we're going to fire more people in 2024 than we did in 2023, given the given the run rate at which we anticipate paying severance going forward. But there's a good reason that California has one of the highest unemployment rates in the country. And that is because we are seeing that portion of the economy, right? California is 15 percent of U.S. GDP, and it is definitely in recession. But there are other states where we're not seeing the unemployment rate rise as quickly as what we're seeing in California. But that is definitely what I would call I would call California ground zero for the labor market recession. I would call Florida ground zero for the housing market recession, which is also being delayed, but is happening there more quickly than anywhere else in the country. Bitcoin's recent performance starkly contrasts the broader market reaction following the Federal Reserve's decision to maintain current interest rates. While stocks and other assets experienced a dip in response to the news, Bitcoin remained relatively stable. This stability comes after a solid start to the year, with Bitcoin currently up nearly 9%, and briefly reaching a new all-time high on significant exchanges. However, Bitcoin's recent price surge to new highs has raised concerns among some experts, including J.P. Morgan Chase's chief market strategist Marco Kalanovic. In a research note, Kalanovic reportedly expressed worry that the rally in Bitcoin and other digital assets could impede the Federal Reserve's ability to implement monetary policy loosening measures. On the contrary, Danielle noted that there was a prevailing expectation of seven rate cuts fully priced into the market in mid-December. However, three months later, the possibility of no rate cuts in 2024 emerged. This abrupt change has triggered a surge in speculative investments, such as Bitcoin, despite cautionary warnings regarding potential risks. Now, let's redirect our attention to a video. In mid-December, when everybody perceived the Powell pivot to have taken to, to, to have taken at that particular Fed mm -hmm. meeting, and mid-December, this is just a few months ago that we're talking about here, right? Three months ago, everybody was saying cash is trash in 2024. Dump your cash holdings. There's yeah. seven rate cuts in 2024, fully priced into the market. Powell's completely folded like a deck of cards. And here we are, nine, not even 90 days later, with the possibility that there's right. not a single rate cut in 2024. All of a sudden, cash is no longer trash. You know, the more investors are, you know, stick it to you, boomer. People who, who say these crazy things on my Twitter feed, you know, you had some kind of a, a token that was priced at the highest dollar level in the history of these theoretical tokens just a few days ago. Mm -hmm. You've had people pour money into Bitcoin, which was flirting with 70,000. The more, the more angry, the more people want to say, we refuse, we yeah. deny, we decry wall street what you define it as in fact we're going to show you that anger with our money we're going to put it into the ultimate inflation hedge by putting it into the most speculative asset in the world but again you may think i just spoke out of both sides of my mouth but i just articulated to you the thinking and that is where we are i go back to where we were on december the 13th when cash was still king mm. when credit spreads are at the 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 tightest that we've ever seen and the stock market at nosebleed valuations and the federal reserve has not moved a millimeter and cash is still king right now at least you can take a good portion call it 10 percent of your portfolio and put it in the riskiest assets you can possibly name. And you can take the other 90% and sit on the sidelines with a beer and popcorn and watch this go by because you still get five plus percent on your cash. But do it True. wonderful, speculate with the craziest of them, put 10% out there, take the other 90%, put it in cash and then sit on the sidelines and be entertained because there's no reason to take credit risk on in this environment. When banks are telling you that charge-offs for credit cards and automobile loans are higher than they were in 2010, you're not being compensated yeah. for taking the risk on right now. Why bother? Because you're stepping into an angry electorate and you're stepping into an equally angry investing environment. Well, you know, I remind people all the time because people do not want to be reminded of what I'm about to say that in April of 2008, the conventional wisdom at the time was we were not going to go into recession. Right. Now, it took 16 months until the final revision 
for first quarter 2008 GDP came in deeply negative, mind you. But at the time, the consensus was that we were not in recession. The Bureau of Labor Statistics in 1976 began reporting unemployment rates on a state-by-state -state basis for 50 states plus Washington, D.C., which equals 51. In 1976, they started collecting this data on a state-by-state -state basis. In nine instances prior to 2023, 150, 50, of states, the number of states had rising unemployment rates. The United States was in recession, not veering into recession, but already in recession by the time the dust settled on revisions. In October of 2023, 50 states, 5 0, had rising unemployment rates. Unless that 10th episode in data to 1976 represented the first time that it's different, October 2023 was it's different this time month for the 10th time, then yeah. recession will be backdated to October 2023. That, uh, it's not scary as much as it's bureaucrats. It's, true. You look at it as being government paid statisticians and they're getting 30%, 39% survey response rates, then whatever they report first time out of the gate should not be reflective of reality. True. You true. should have to wait until they get 100% of the respondents to complete the survey before they finally get the data right. Yet despite sharply lower inflation, a healthy job market, and a record high stock market, many Americans say they are unhappy with the state of the economy. This sentiment will weigh on President Joe Biden's bid for re-election. Many voters blame Biden for the surge in consumer prices in 2021. Though inflationary pressures have significantly eased, average prices remain about 17% above where they stood three years ago. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. If you found this content helpful, give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to stay updated. Thank you for being a part of this journey with us.